Today we're taking a quick look at ancient Egypt. We start by looking at the geography of ancient Egypt, which you all probably know is located in present-day Egypt. Now, Egypt is in northeast Africa, with the Sinai Peninsula actually located in Asia, making Egypt a key connector of the two continents. It is surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea in the north, the Red Sea to the east, Sudan to the south, and Libya to the west. And Egypt, of course, has the Nile River running through it, which is the longest river in the world. Now, if we look at a map, we will see that the ancient Egyptian cities were located by the banks of the Nile River. This has not changed much even today. The most highly populated Egyptian cities are close to the Nile. Now, here's the tricky bit. Upper Egypt is in the south, and Lower Egypt is in the north, and that's the case until today. Can you think why this is? Now, the Nile River flows from the south to the north, emptying into the Mediterranean Sea. That might give you a hint. Anyway, the Nile would flood every year, and that provided fertile soil, allowing for agriculture. However, the flooding of the Nile could be unexpected and could result in disasters. If the Nile flooded less than usual, thousands would starve, and if it flooded more than usual, farmlands and homes would be destroyed. Egypt's massive hot desert in the west provided a natural barrier of protection for the Egyptians. However, it also forced them to live on a very small portion of the land. People settled near the Nile River around the year 8000 BCE, but the ancient Egyptian civilization did not rise until around 3100 BC or 3100 BCE. Now, try to think for a moment. What is the difference between a settlement and a civilization? Hmm. Some of the main factors do include a common language, common laws, organized government, division of labor, and all of these things lead to people cooperating, being protected, having food security, working together, and eventually specializing to make developments. With time, they would develop trade relations with other groups of people so they can have a wider variety of available resources. Now, the earliest evidence of a unified Egyptian civilization dates back to around 3100 BCE. Artifacts reveal the pharaoh Narmer, or Menes, wearing the crown of both Upper and Lower Egypt combined, dating back to that period. And ancient Egyptian civilization can be split into three distinct periods, which are the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. And in between these periods were the intermediate periods, which was when the economy and leadership were least stable. So let's start with the Old Kingdom, which is remembered as the Age of the Pyramids. And before I get into this, let me remind you that I don't go into too many details like pharaohs' names or dynasties um, or too many dates. The purpose of these videos is to give you an overview of the topic at hand. Then you can dive deeper through further research and there are many resources you can find on the Human History Project website. So if you need more reading material, you know where to go, and the link is in the description. So, moving on with the Old Kingdom, which began around the year 2600 BCE, and this was when many pyramids were built. Ancient Egyptian art, society, and culture developed during this period, and ancient Egyptian religion, which was polytheistic, also developed during this period. Uh, now, ancient Egyptians believed in many gods, and they had a theocratic government. The pharaoh was believed to be a living embodiment of the god of the sky, Horus. He was also considered to be the son 
of the sun god, Ra, and he would become the god of the afterlife, Osiris, after he died. Now, the pyramids were built as tombs for the pharaohs and had both skilled paid laborers in addition to forced slave labor involved in the construction. The Old Kingdom came to an end with the beginning of the first intermediate period, which began around the year 2150 BCE. And this was a time of complete chaos. Upper and Lower Egypt were once again divided. They were ruled by different dynasties. There was widespread instability and famine lasting for over a century until the beginning of the Middle Kingdom, which was around the year 2040 BCE. Now, the Middle Kingdom was known as the Golden Age, and this is mainly because Egypt was reunited. There were new trade routes leading to prosperity. The pharaohs of the time actually cared about the welfare and the interests of their people. They built strong armies. They expanded into neighboring territories, including Palestine, Syria, and Nubia. But the Middle Kingdom also came to an end with the beginning of the Second Intermediate Period, during which Egypt was once again split into Upper and Lower Egypt when Lower Egypt was conquered by the Hyksos. Now, the Second Intermediate Period saw the Hyksos divide the people from within, leading to widespread chaos once again. But the Egyptians managed to overthrow them, marking the beginning of the New Kingdom around 1550 BCE. The New Kingdom was a period filled with imperialism. During this period, Egypt saw unprecedented territorial expansion, and some of the most famous pharaohs, the ones you definitely heard of, like maybe Tutankhamun, lived during the New Kingdom. We also see Akhenaten, who is also known as Akhenaton, and he was the first pharaoh to promote a monotheistic religion, worshipping only one god, and that was the god Aten. This period saw many expansions, prosperity, but as everything must, it also came to an end when a lot of foreign groups started attempting to conquer Egypt. Now, these repeated attempts so much instability, so much war going on, all of this weakened the ancient Egyptian New Kingdom and eventually led to the beginning of the Third Intermediate Period and the end of the New Kingdom around the year 1070 BCE. Now, during this period, Egypt was ruled by one foreign leader after another, and this led to Greek rule and Roman rule over the following centuries. However, the remains that the ancient Egyptians left behind show their great accomplishments, and the written records of their history have helped us learn more about them. If you liked this video and found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for more videos.